Hello dear students. Today the topic of our lesson is The North Ship. It's a poem written by Philip Larkin. Learning objectives of the lesson. To enable the students to know about the poet, to improve their vocabulary, to summarize the poem and to answer the questions. About the poet. Philip Larkin was an English poet, music critic, and novelist who is still very popular and respected. His poems are highly structured, yet written in plain, straightforward language. This poem is a bit like the beginning of a story. It contains strong images, but it also raises questions in the reader's mind. Now words meanings. The first word is sailing. It means travel in a boat with sails, especially as a sport. Anchor, a heavy object attached to a chain and used to hold a ship in place by mooring it to the bottom of the sea. Captivity, it means imprisonment. Fire spilling star, this is possibly a poetic expression of a comet. Next is fourth. It means out and away from a starting point, onwards in time. Frostily, cold and icy, in an unfriendly way. Possessed, it means completely controlled by an evil spirit. Quaking, trembling or shaking with fear. Rigged, Rigged means fitted or equipped with rigging, sails or ropes. Unfruitful, not producing good or helpful results. Now I'm going to read the poem. I saw three ships go sailing by, over the sea, the lifting sea. And the wind rose in the morning sky, and one was rigged for a long journey. The first ship turned towards the west, over the sea, the running sea, and by the wind was all possessed and carried to a rich country. The second ship turned towards the east, over the sea, the quaking sea, and the wind hunted it like a beast to anchor in captivity. The third ship drove towards the north, over the sea, the darkening sea. But no breath of wind came forth, and the decks shone frostily. The northern sky rose high and black, over the proud, unfruitful sea. East and west, the ships came back, happily or unhappily. But the third went wide and far, into an unforgiving sea, under a fire-spilling star, and it was rigged for a long journey. Now, the summary of the poem. The North Ship is a tale about a man's life who decides to immigrate to no man's land. Released in every direction, this poem wins the Life Award for best philosophical access. Despite life's concern, we proclaim that we too must move on. Philip Larkin's poem, The North Ship, is about this journey of life. Life is a continuous journey and it's a kind of endless journey battling all the obstacles in route. Philip Larkin's The North Ship makes a sharp focus on that eternal goal of ours, towards the meeting of unknown and unseen. Like that of the Tennyson's Ulysses, the poem, the North Ship highlights our point of desired goals, a meeting point of onward journey, a forward journey where perils to invest us. It's a kind of symbolic journey of aspiration that overawes 
all obstacles this poem states the journey of three ships at three different destinations while the first two ships return safely the third one goes into calamity and meets hazardous ends exercise a1 draw a table in your notebook like the one given below it's a good idea to draw the column headings and fill in your answers for the first row before moving to the next one your answers should be in note form but with enough detail for you to use them later on now look at the table given in this exercise uh, there are five columns in column 1 on the top there is the word ship in column 2 where did it go 3 what were the conditions at sea column 4 what happened to the ship and 5 do you have any question now the first one is the first ship in column 1 and in column 2 the first ship turned towards the west to a rich country now in column 3 windy the conditions were windy at the sea windy the running sea wind wild possessed by the wind in column 4 what happened to this ship the first ship came back now in column 4 what happened to the first ship the first ship came back from a rich country happily or unhappily in column 5 do you have any questions the questions are which country happily second ship where did it go it turned towards the east what were the conditions at sea lots of waves the quaking sea windy the wind hunted it like a beast now the second ship column 3 what happened to the ship unable to sail properly captured did it sink anchored in captivity came back happily or unhappily now come to column 5 do you have any questions so the question is was it trapped somewhere or did it sink unhappily now the third ship it is for students to answer the question given in the first row so the answer uh, for the third ship is where did it go the third ship drove towards the north question 2 what were the conditions at sea dark deep waters darkening sea still no breath of wind came forth cold decks shone frostily sea was unforgiving now column 4 and question 3 what happened to the ship to the third ship the third ship went far and wide rigged for a long journey and column 5 Do you have any questions? Now the questions are did it return? Where was it going? Now exercise A1 B. The wind seems to help the first ship because it carried it to a rich country. What does the wind do to the second ship? How would you describe its actions? Answer The wind hunted the second ship. the word quaking in the first line of the third stanza sets up a feeling of fear it seems like the ship is the prey and the wind is a wild animal chasing it question c how is the north described in the fourth and fifth stanzas what impression does the description create answer the north is described in the fourth and fifth stanzas as having high and black skies over the darkening sea it is cold frostily and the seas and unfruitful they have no fish 
are other produced in them. The impression is of a bleak, dark, cold, empty, still place. Exercise A2. Talk about these questions with a classmate or as a class, then write your answers. Question A. What do you think the narrator is? Answer. The first stanza begins with I, so we might presume that the narrator is an observer on the shore. Question B. Where do you think the narrator is? Answer. The narrator is on the shore. Question C. How does the ship go wide and far if there is no breath of wind to sail with? Answer. This is a mystery. The poem raises questions. Is this a ghost ship? Exercise A3. Answer the following questions with reference to context. A. Over the sea, the quaking sea, and the wind hunted it like a beast. Now question 1. What is referred to as the it that is being hunted? Answer. It refers to the third ship which is being hunted. Question 2. What emotion is conveyed by the image of a quaking sea? Answer. The emotion of fear is conveyed by the image of a quaking sea. Question 3. Which of the three statements best explains the presentation of the wind in the, these lines? Explain your choice. The wind is presented as scared and quiet. The wind is presented as frightening and uh, violent. The wind is presented as loud and hungry. The answer is, the wind is presented as frightening and violent. Exercise 3B. Answer the following questions with reference to context. Into an unforgiving sea, under a fire spilling star. Question 1. Why might the sea seem unforgiving? Answer. The sea is relentless, difficult and hostile. This ship does not seem to have an easy journey. Question 2. What do you think a fire spilling star is? Explain your ideas. Answer. The fire spilling star here can be a description of a comet, a spectacular sight. Perhaps, though the journey is hard and long, it is full of wonder. Exercise 4. Understanding the rhyme and repetition. Question A. Is there a rhyming pattern in this poem? What is it? Answer. Yes, the rhyming pattern is A, B, A, B. Question B. Notice that the poet has used the word C as the last word of the second line of every stanza. Which words does the poet rhyme with C? Answer. The poet rhymes the following words with C. Journey, country, captivity, frostily and unhappily. Question C. Poets often repeat words to highlight their importance to the message and meaning of a poem. Which words or phrases are repeated in the poem? Answer. The following words and phrases are repeated in the poem. Rigged for a long journey over the sea, see the wind. Uh, dear students, this is the end of the lesson and I hope that you would have learned all the questions and answers given in the exercise along with summary and words meanings. Thank you very much. Goodbye.